mid-July 2019. The Jefferson Chalmers neighborhood along the Detroit River. There's flooding of the kind that hasn't been seen in years. They said that over two billion gallons of water was being processed through our storm drains every day and that the system was only uh, supposed to handle about a billion and a half. And so they declared an emergency and they're now uh, working with private contractors to mediate some of the breaches in the, the, the walls and stop the water from flowing down into the, uh, the streets. And we set records uh, for the month of July on Lake Superior, Lake St. Clair, Lake Erie, and on Lake Ontario. Keith Kompoltowicz follows lake levels for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in Detroit. And we'll come very close to setting records uh, on those lakes again in August. Right here, going right into the basement. Carlo Moon lives a few hundred feet from the canal that overflowed. We haven't had this since the early 80s. Just when I was a kid, uh, it was coming from right across the street. And it was coming all over, and my uncle had to come out and get us in a boat. That was the only way for us to get out of the home. I understand history repeats itself, but now we're going through this again, and it's, it's just, I'm trying to figure out how, why, and where. One thing we know about lake levels is they fluctuate. They go up and they go down. Local 4 meteorologist Paul Gross has been forecasting weather for more than 30 years. I remember the, we got to dredge, we have to dredge. Where's the money? We need to dredge. I can't even get my yacht out of the, uh, out of the harbor. They were dredging at the Detroit Yacht Club back in 2013 because of record low water. Big boat house. Over in Jefferson Chalmers, the canal in John Meyer's backyard looked nothing like this. And you literally had to use ladders to get down in the boats. But then it's been gradually building up back up to, to this level. In the last two years, it seems to have been never really tapering off during the summer like it usually does. So. The prior records were in the 1960s and then came up to record highs in the middle 1970s which were eclipsed by the record highs of the 1980s which are now being eclipsed by the record highs currently. The last low cycle came in large part from warmer weather and warmer water. As the lakes warm they're going to tend to evaporate more. Andrew Gronwald studies the Great Lakes at the University of Michigan. So one of the things that we're trying to get to do a better job of talking about is this idea that climate change can actually exacerbate the extremes between high and low water levels. Climate change, a warming earth, does affect the Great Lakes, according to Gronwald, where rain, snow, and evaporation are the biggest factors. Here it is, yeah, April was 5.82 inches of rain. It was our third wettest April on record. Meteorologist Paul Gross can connect climate change to the more extreme weather we've been having recently. People ask me all the time, how does the warming of the climate actually affect our weather? And I think the best analogy to use were some of the great home run hitters that were using steroids and they were hitting balls out of the park right and left. You know, you're talking about Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, we all remember that. What people don't remember is that these guys were great home run hitters before they started taking steroids. They were hitting home runs anyway. What the steroids did was made them stronger, and so they hit the home runs that they hit further, and they hit a few more. More intense snow and rain, hotter and colder temperatures. Gross explained it online when the heat wave hit Detroiters so, this summer. Uh, on social media, I expected there to be some uh, uh, comments, but I was a little surprised that it was three to four hundred. The Post brought out a string of climate change doubters, and the skeptics have their thoughts about Great Lakes water levels, too. Ten years ago, headlines and scientific climate models predicted a continuous decline in water levels because it's getting hotter. Most of the people who really have an interest in lake levels were buying into that idea that uh, low lake levels were going to last for a long time. At the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration office in Ann Arbor, Brent Lofgren remembers the calls for immediate action, like finding ways to keep water from draining out to the Atlantic Ocean. There were ideas about putting up some baffles to reduce the flow through the St. Clair and Detroit rivers. Those did not actually happen before the lake level started going back up. In the following winter, the winter of 2013 and 2014, it was an extremely cold, uh, we, we were visited by that polar vortex phenomenon 
we had record snowfall followed by very wet conditions in the spring and that kind of started this turnaround. But Lofgren saw a problem with the low water prediction. It was overly dependent on air temperature and didn't take into consideration the, the separate effect of the seasonal cycle and the amount of sunlight that's coming in at different times of year. Water levels still go in cycles, and the Great Lakes don't necessarily adhere to climate models that apply elsewhere. Even though we've seen big changes, Lofgren says the role of climate change hasn't been proven. I would not attribute low levels in 2013, high levels in 2019, and rapid transition between those. Uh, I, I would not attribute that to human-caused climate change. Others can disagree, but Lofgren is no doubter of climate change in general. He's actually among some leading scientists who share the 2007 Nobel Prize with Al Gore regarding climate change. Short term, what does the future hold headed into September? Um, even though we are forecasting declines like they typically do in the fall, they're still very high compared to the long-term record, and the significant issues could continue uh, during the fall storm season. Over at Jefferson Chalmers, forecasting for high water can be simpler. Well, I know when the wind blows east, that's when the water rises. So, anytime it blows east, then we get hit with it.